Hey, so I'm just sitting here getting ready to do some coffee stained index cards and book pages. And I thought real quick, I'll just go ahead and show you how I do it. It's so easy, we all get it. But I wanted to go ahead and show you real quick. So I take my, uh, I like to use a large squirt bottle and I just fill it where I want it with water. And then I just go ahead and pour it into my measuring cup. And then I always like to heat this water up so that the coffee will dissolve well. This is nice and warmed up now and this turned into roughly three cups of water. I really love to use this larger size squirt bottle and I just always use it as my initial measuring cup of course easy peasy we all know and then there's no set formula for me to uh put the coffee in what i'm really doing is i'm just looking at color at this point so if you want a real pale pale coffee stain you can go really light much lighter than i went and you know it's such a personal preference at this point so i'm going to go a tiny bit more I like mine pretty dark. I like it to show up and I like it to look pretty grungy. So now that I've got that, I just let this cool and pour it into my squirt bottle, throw some uh, rubbing alcohol in there to keep it from molding and we're good to go. So let's head over to the table. Here we are in my little setup for coffee staining and painting papers. So on this table, I just like to throw a thin piece of plastic down to protect everything. And then I've got 91% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. And I like to just take a couple pipettes full. That's about half, so we'll do a few and throw it into my uh, coffee squirt bottle here. And this just ensures that you don't have any molding issues with your coffee down the road. I like to do it just to be safe. Now the first thing I do is I just drench everything with coffee and then I do another step after I let it dry. So you want to get your squirt bottle set up the way you need it, of course. There we go. I got it on a nice mist. And I really like to just soak everything. Now, usually the book pages do not have to be done on both sides. This usually saturates both sides. But if you're doing stuff like junk journals with your index cards, you're going to want to do both sides of these. But I really just like the lines and I'm only using one side for collage. So I just do the one. Another really beautiful look you can get is to just partially spray your papers. I love to do both. I really like to saturate my book pages completely though. So we'll let this dry and come back and I'll show you the next step I like to do.
have the space to spread all your papers out on a big table, what an easy way to get a lot of coffee stained papers really fast. Now the booked pages get very saturated and they look really nice if you do some that are um, not all coffee stained, they, it adds a lot of interest, but I did want kind of a uniform spread of coffee with this batch. And then there is really something magical about this paper here that's uh, these uh, extra large index cards. They come up with the most unique and interesting coloring and patterns just by laying them out on the table and spraying them. I really love to do it this way and get a really fast batch of papers. And then this was after it dried, of course, we used the lid and the spatter on top of these as well, just to add a bit more interest to them. So now, we'll run down real quick with the ones that we spattered with the white. And they came out really beautiful with some added interest to these as well. Now, if, if you water down your paint, it really doesn't matter. I mean, you can go. The sky's the limit with this art form as well. You can spray them with thinned out paint instead of coffee. You can also use all different colors, whatever you want. Sky's the limit with all of this. It's such an amazing, quick way to get a lot of papers. So again, here's these index cards. I just love how they come out. I, it, I don't know what it is about this paper, but when you do the back sides, I just did a few more of those, they're drying. Um, same thing, the back sides end up being really incredible too. Now I had a bunch of paint on my plastic, so I ended up with some paint on the backs. And of course, you know, just use clean plastic if you don't want to end up with any issues like that. So there's those. Now let's go through the ones real quick that we spattered with the, the tint, that Tattered Angels tint. Now these are kind of a blackish gray color and I would have liked to have used walnut stain. I really like it at full concentration though too. It's, it's very different watered down versus full concentration. But uh, my walnut stain, I misplaced it. So I'm gonna have to find it because I really like the look of that too. And then here we sponged some white on and dripped some white on. Makes for a lot of interesting collage sheets or pockets or journal pages, whatever you wanna do. And that's the nice thing about these book pages. They just go right through, but again, I ended up with some paint on mine. I'm okay with that. My plan for these is to use them for collage sheets anyway, so it's all right. But yeah, this thinner paper, man, it just goes right through and you get all these beautiful markings on the other side as well. Really great batch of papers. So I hope you give this a shot. And if you can just protect your floor, my carpet under that table is completely fried. So I'm lucky I'm able to do whatever I want up there. But yeah, protect your floor and protect your table and you can really go to town and get a lot of papers quick. I hope you enjoyed this and give it a shot and I'll see you real soon. Be sure to like and subscribe for me. It helps me a bunch and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.